Hello to chapter 124 of Moby Dick by Herman Melville and this chapter is titled The Needle. Next morning the not yet subsided sea rolled in long slow billows of mighty bulk and striving in the peacock's gurgling track pushed her on like giant's palms outspread. The strong, unstaggering breeze abounded so that sky and air seemed vast, outbellying sails. The whole world boomed before the wind. Muffled in the full morning light, the invisible sun was only known by the spread intensity of his place where his bayonet rays moved on in stacks. Emblazonings as of crowned Babylonian kings and queens reigned over everything. The sea was a crucible of molten gold that bubblingly leaps with light and heat. Long maintaining an enchanted silence, Ahab stood apart, and every time the teetering ship loweringly pitched down her bowsprit, he turned to eye the bright sun's rays produced ahead, and when she profoundly settled by the stern, he turned behind and saw the sun's rearward place and how the same yellow rays were blending with his undeviating wake. Aha, my ship, thou mightiest well be taken now for the sea chariot of the sun. Ho, ho, all ye nations before my prow, I bring the sun to ye. Yoke on the further billows, hello, a tandem, I drive the sea. But suddenly, reined back by some counter-thought, he hurried towards the helm, huskily demanding how the ship was heading. "'East to east, sir,' said the frightened steersman. "'Thou liest!' smiting him with his clenched fist. "'Heading east at this hour in the morning and the sun astern!' Upon this every soul was confounded, for the phenomenon just then observed by Ahab had unaccountably escaped everyone else. But its very blinding palpableness must have been the cause. Thrusting his head halfway into the binnacle, Ahab caught one glimpse of the compasses. His uplifted arm slowly fell. For a moment, he almost seemed to stagger. Standing behind him, Starbuck looked, and lo, the two compasses pointed east, and the peacock was infallibly going west. But ere the first wild alarm could get out abroad among the crew, the old man with a rigid laugh exclaimed, I have it! It has happened before. Mr. Starbuck, Last night's thunder turned our compasses, that's all. Thou hast before now heard of such a thing, I take it? Aye, but never before has it happened to me, sir, said the pale mate gloomily. Here it must needs be said that accidents like this have in more than one case occurred to ships in violent storms. The magnetic energy as developed in the mariner's needle is, as all know, essentially one with the electricity beheld in heaven. Hence, it is not to be much marvelled at that such things should be in instances where the lightning has actually struck the vessel so as to smite down some of the spars and rigging, the effect upon the needle has at times been still more fatal, all its lodestone virtue being annihilated, so that the before magnetic steel was of no more use than an old wife's knitting needle. But in either case, the needle never again of itself recovers the original virtue thus marred or lost, and if the binnacle compasses be affected, the same fate reaches all the others that may be in the ship, even where the lowermost one inserted into the calcium. 
deliberately standing before the binnacle and eyeing the transpointed compasses, the old man, with the sharp of his extended hand, now took the precise bearing of the sun, and satisfied that the needles were exactly inverted, shouted out his orders for the ship's course to be changed accordingly. The yards were hard up, and once more the peacock thrust her undaunted bows into the opposing wind, for the supposed fair one had only been juggling her. Meanwhile, whatever were his own secret thoughts, Starbuck said nothing, but quietly he issued all requisite orders, while Stubb and Flask, who in some small degree seemed then to be sharing his feelings, likewise unmurmuringly acquiesced. As for the men, though some of them lowly rumbled, their fear of Ahab was greater than their fear of fate. But as ever before, the pagan harponeers remained almost wholly unimpressed, or if impressed, it was only with a certain magnetism shot into their congenial hearts from inflexible Ahabs. For a space, the old man walked in the deck in rolling reveries, but chancing to slip with his ivory heel, he saw the crushing copper sight tubes of the quadrant he had the day before dashed to the deck. Thou poor proud heaven gazer and sun's pilot, yesterday I wrecked thee, and today the compasses would fain have wrecked me. So, so. But Ahab is lord over the level lodestone yet. Mr. Starbuck, a lance without the pole, a top maul, and the smallest of the sailmaker's needles, quick. Accessory, perhaps, to the impulse dictating the thing he was now about to do were certainly prudential motives, whose object might have been to revive the spirits of his crew by a stroke of his subtle skill in a matter so wondrous as that of the inverted compasses. Besides, the old man well knew that to steer by transpointed needles, though clumsily practicable, was not a thing to be passed over by superstitious sailors without some shudderings and evil portents. Men, said he, steadily turning upon the crew as the mate handed him the thing he had demanded. My men, the thunder turned old Ahab's needles, but out of this bit of steel Ahab can make one of his own that will point as true as any. Abashed glances of servile, servile wonder were exchanged by the sailors as this was said, and with fascinated eyes they awaited whatever magic might follow. But Starbuck looked away. With a blow, from the top maul, Ahab knocked off the steel head of the lance, and then, handing to the mate the long iron rod remaining, bade him hold it upright without its touching the deck. Then, with the maul, after repeatedly smiting the upper end of his iron rod, he placed the blunted needle endwise on the top of it, and less strongly hammered that several times, the mate still holding the rod as before. Then going through some small strange motions with it, whether indispensable to the magnetizing of the steel or merely intended to augment the awe of the crew, is uncertain. He called for linen thread and moving to the binnacle slipped out the two reversed needles there, and horizontally suspended the sail needle by its middle, over one of the compass cards. At first, the steel went round and round, quivering and vibrating at either end, but at last it settled to its place. When Ahab, who had been intently watching for this result, stepped frankly back from the binnacle and, pointing his stretched arm towards it, exclaimed, Look ye for yourselves, if Ahab be not the lord of the level lodestone, the sun 
is east, and that compass swears it. One after another they peered in, for nothing but their own eyes could persuade such ignorance as theirs, and one after another they slunk away. In his fiery eyes of scorn and triumph, you then saw Ahab in all his fatal pride. So that was chapter 120, 124. Bye-bye. Till next time with chapter 125 titled The Log and Line.